For more on the Fed's rate hike path, we want to bring in Greg Ipp. He is the Wall Street Journal's chief economics commentator and deputy economics editor, too. And, and Greg, um, you had a great piece. I think it was earlier this week. Maybe it was last week. But it, it made me think about things differently. Just the idea that this 4 to 5 percent inflation, while it's lower inflation, is kind of getting stubbornly ingrained and consumers are getting used to it, which means companies can then raise their prices. And that is a very different take. What, what worries you about that scenario? Well, you know, the fact that companies are boasting about their pricing power and that they can raise prices without losing sales is telling us they're just not getting a lot of resistance from consumers. And I think that's for two reasons. One, first of all, consumers are feeling pretty flush. You know, their wages are going up. Job growth is very strong. And uh, number two, I think there's an element of them getting used to it. You know, if they were used to 2% inflation, <laughs> and uh, the supermarket raised prices on them, they might say, whoa, I'm going to, you know, shop around a little bit. And that's not happening. And, you know, going over some of the Fed speak that uh, Steve was just referring to, the thing that I find quite striking is that pretty much everybody, the hawks and the doves, agree that inflation is too high right now, and it seems to have stalled out. We went from 9% to 5% on the headline inflation rate, and now we're sort of stuck there. The core inflation rate is, you know, uh, moving along at 4 to 5 percent, not much evidence that it's moving down. So the only thing that really sets the hawks and the doves apart is that the hawks, the doves think, well, give us a few months and all that Fed tightening and bank weakness will bring the cool off the economy and bring down inflation. And the hawks are saying, I don't think so. But both agree that they're not seeing the progress on inflation that they'd hoped for. Steve, what do you think about that, just this idea that we're becoming complacent to inflation that is higher than the Fed's target, at least double, maybe maybe even 150 percent times that? Yeah, and, and I, I'm trying to imagine, this is not scientific, Becky, but it's cultural. And um, I think the best person to read about this is Tom Barkin from Richmond, who's talked about this notion that up until we ran into this inflation run we're having now, the culture inside companies was one of you wouldn't raise prices. The supplier would call and say, I have to charge you more. The, 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 the guy would say, you know what? You go back and sharpen your pencil and find me a different price that's lower. Now, what, what, the way I begin inflation speeches right now is the most important element, Becky, is that the cat is out of the bag. The cultural notion of the ability of company to raise prices is now dramatically different from it was. And what I worry about, and, and I think what the Fed, listening to Greg, I think Fed officials freak out when they hear what Greg is saying. And, and I worry about the following conversation. Hey, guys, listen, I got some good news for you. The price increase this year is not going to be 10 percent. It's going to be 5 percent. And if that 5 percent becomes ingrained and becomes something that's a salve to the to the purchaser, that's when the Fed is in trouble and it loses its 2 percent target. Greg, what do you think they are most likely to do at this meeting in June? Uh, right now, I think pause is still the uh, likeliest path forward. And I base that mostly on what sort of the uh, top leaders have been saying. I base it on what Jay Powell said at his press conference, on what John Williams said at his most recent speech. And, of course, we'll be able to have to update those views once we hear from both those folks uh, later today. But I think it's interesting, as Steve was saying, that the, um, the probability is starting to shift in the market there. And I do think that reflects both the tone of the, uh, the Fed talk here and the flow of the data, which has just not been very friendly. I mean, just look at this week's number on jobless claims, right? The rise in claims had been about the only evidence we could see that the labor market was cooling off. It all reversed just in the right. last week. And everybody seems to agree that a cooler labor market is a prerequisite to getting core inflation back down.